There are two, there are multiple ways to expand a binomial. Binomial is just like a plus b, okay? Uh, if I said take a plus b to the sixth power, you would do a plus b times a plus b times a plus b six times. That's annoying, okay? But you would do it, I guess. Or, you know, it'd be easy to grade, whatever. But so if you want to expand, you can expand via multiplication, all right? What they started finding, and I don't know, I guess Pascal had lots of time on his hands, <laughs> but it's based on his triangle. I don't think I was the next one that actually did it. But um, Pascal's triangle is, uh, it will remind you of Fibonacci sequence. But Pascal's triangle is a triangle that starts with one, as you can see right here, and then we have one and one, and then you actually are just adding what's above it. So the guy on the outside is always one. This guy is an addition of these two guys. One and one is two, and then the outside guy is another one. And then we have one, and then we have one and two is three, two and one is three, and then outside guy is a one. We see how we're building this triangle here, right? Mm -hmm. One, one and three is four, three and three is six, three and one is four, and then an outside one. It's similar to, if you remember Fibonacci's, you just add the two in front of it. It's kind of like that, but it's a triangle based, okay? Um, and then you have one, five, 10, 10, five, one, all right? What they started finding is binomials expand in this pattern. Really weird, okay? Um, they expand in this pattern with the coefficients, and then um, the degrees just kind of go down and up, all right? So let's look at one, and then we're going to do it. We can throw in by, um, combinations in there, too. It's weird. So we're going to start a to the sixth. And we're going to go a to the fifth, a to the fourth, a to the third, a squared, a to the first, and a to the zero, all right? It just goes down. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit so I have room. Okay. Then from there, we are going to do our B's. Okay. B's start at zero. My second guy is gonna start at zero and he's gonna go up. So far, so good, all right? Now, we have to consider my positives and negatives here. This guy's easy, because they're all positives. So I technically have a plus sign in between here. Now, I say you have to consider your positive and negatives, because if b were negative, then b to the zero wouldn't change, but b to the one would be negative. b squared would be positive, b cubed would be negative. b to the fourth would be positive, b to the fifth would be negative. Do you ever see how this is going to affect what's happening? So when we have something other than a positive thing in there, we're going to put it in parentheses and we're going to actually multiply it out. All right? So it's going to exp expand this way. Then I have to consider what happens with my coefficients. Because remember, when you FOIL, you're going to have like terms that you combine. Well, what they found is they repeat in this pattern. So my coefficients are actually going to follow Pascal's triangle. I am on the sixth one, all right? So I am going to look at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this row right here. This row right here. My coefficients are going to follow this pattern, okay, on this row. So this is my sixth row. I start with 0, so that's why that's my sixth row. And my coefficients are going to follow that. So my coefficient here is going to be a 1. My coefficient here is going to be a 6. My coefficient here is going to be a 15. I did not leave enough room. My coefficient here is going to be a 20. My coefficient here is going to be a 15, a 6, and a 1. So if I were to take a plus b and multiply it out six times, six times, I would have to FOIL that thing. I would get 1, a to the 6. What's b to the 0? What's anything to the 0? It's 1. So he's not there. Plus 6, a to the 5th, b. Plus 15, a to the 4th, b squared. Plus 20, a cubed, b cubed. Plus 15, a squared, b to the 4th. Plus 6, a, b to the 5th. Plus a to the 1st is just 1, b to the 6th. That is what it would be if I multiplied it 6 times. By the way, way easier than multiplying it six times, let me just say. Way easier than multiplying it six times. All right? So if you expand this one to the eighth, you are going to use your eighth row, which is right here. 
These will become your coefficients. You would start a to the eighth power and go down, b to the zero power and go up. And so your final answer should look like this. a to the eighth plus eight, a to the seventh, b, plus 28, a to the sixth, b squared, plus 56, a to the fifth, b cubed, plus 70, a to the fourth, b to the fourth, 56, a cubed, b to the fifth, 28, a squared, b to the sixth, eight, a, b to the seventh, and b to the eighth. All right, much easier, by the way, than doing it eight times. I would hate that. So the first example that we did just had A and B. That's all we had to worry about. When you have something other than just a variable, then the number that you are taking to a power changes what's happening with the coefficients, all right? You still use the same coefficients, but then you have numbers involved as well. And so this one was just to the third power. So we have this to the third, so we are gonna use the third row here of Pascal's triangle. All right, and so using the third row and what they've given us, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna say my first coefficient is one. I'm gonna take x to the third power, negative two to the zero power. And then I have three as my coefficient x to the second power, negative 2 to the first, 3x to the first power, negative 2 to the second, then 1x to the zero power, negative 2 to the third. All right? And then I'm going to simplify that. So I have a 1 and then negative two to the zero power is also a one. So I have a one times a one times an x cubed. So I have x cubed there, all right? Then I have a three, negative two to the first power is negative two. So three times negative two is negative six, right? And so now my coefficient's not just three, it includes what that negative two does to it. So that becomes negative six, and then I have an x squared. All right? And then for this one, I have three. Negative two squared is positive four. So three times four is 12, positive 12. And I have an x to the first power. Then I have a one. x to the zero is one. Negative two cubed is negative eight. So I have a one times a one times a negative eight. So my last term here is negative eight. And so you can see that when you throw something other than just a variable in there, it's going to affect what you're doing. You'll also notice that I put this in parentheses. It's a positive one X, a negative two is what you're gonna look at it. Because if I made it plus a negative, it would be <coughs> plus negative two on the inside. So you're gonna consider that negative which, which with whatever it is in front of. So I had a negative 2. I used a negative 2 when I expanded here. All right. So go ahead and try that exact one to the fourth, which is check understanding number 2. Check understanding number 2.
so Pascal's is like the first way um, to do it. And it's, it works fine. The problem is if you don't have the triangle right in front of you, you kind of have to recreate it. I mean, you're probably not going to memorize the triangle. Just, I mean, the first few rows are rather simple. When you get to like eight, I mean, it's just going to be a pain to try to remember what that is or to, to draw out the triangle for eight rows. Like, that's a pain. Um, and so binomial theorem is a theorem that kind of replaces the Pascal's triangle using combinations. And so combinations are easy because you don't really have to remember what they are. You can just use your calculator to figure out what the combination is, or you could do it manually if you wanted to. Um, but you don't have to remember the number sequence here because you use a combination instead of Pascal's triangle. And so using the binomial theorem here, um, what the binomial theorem says is that these coefficients are in a pattern based on combinations. You start at your degree taken zero at a time, and then you just count up one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, until you get to however many you have all together at a time, all right? And what it actually does is it, it is the row of Pascal's triangle for that row. I mean, that's what it is. It follows the same exact pattern, except instead of the triangle, you're just using a combination, all right? So for example, this is to the fourth, all right? So to expand this, everything else stays the same. You have the highest exponent down and then the lowest up for the two terms for this binomial. The coefficients, however, are going to use combinations. So instead of using Pascal's triangle for the fourth, I'm going to say a combination of four things taken zero at a time, and that's going to be my coefficient. And then I'm still going to do my first term to the fourth power, my second term to the zero power. And then I'm gonna do a combination of four things taken one at a time. And so I'm gonna do this all the way down until I get to four taken four at a time. And what you'll find when you put those combinations in is they are going to be the Pascal's triangle. You just don't have to remember it. Still running out of room here. All right. And so when you put these in to the calculator, four things taken zero at a time should be a one. All right. And so you have 1 times g to the 4th times 1, which is g to the 4th. Four things taken one at a time should be 4. So you're going to have 4 g cubed h. Um, combination of four things taken two at a time is going to be 6. Four things taken three at a time is 4. And four things taken four at a time is going to be 1. And so instead of using Pascal's triangle, you're just going to use these combinations instead. Um, they both, I mean, you get the same exact number sequence. It's just you don't have to either have the triangle or create it. And so especially when you're doing higher ones, like the one that y'all are going to do is to the ninth power. You, If you don't, I mean, to use Pascal's triangle, you'd literally have to draw out 10 rows of Pascal's triangle. Um, and so using the combination is going to be a little bit faster um, than creating Pascal's triangle. So go ahead and try check understanding number three.
So I want you to notice something about your exponents. You'll notice that the exponent of your second term is always the same as your second number on your combination. Did you notice that? So like this is a four and that's a four, that's a five, that's a five. Like your second term is always the same exponent as what combination you're at, okay? Something else, hopefully, that you can see is that these always add up to that one. So it's five and zero, which is five. Four and one, which is five. Three and two, which is five. Two and three, which is five, all right? Everybody see that? So if I were looking for a specific term, let's say I wanted this term right here, <clears throat> then something about that term is going to be a pattern. It's gonna be my degree, however many I have. That's my five. My three, well, that's gonna match up with my second term's exponent. And then the two is gonna be the subtraction of that, five minus three, all right? And so if I wanted a specific term, then I know what even my coefficient's going to be of that specific term, because it's gonna be a combination of my total taken whatever my degree is of my second term. How does that help me? Well, let's look at the next problem. All right, refer to the photo, Miss Dawn Staley, our wonderful coach for Carolina, right? Um, assume that Dawn's probability of success of a single shot is the same as her cumulative. So we're gonna assume that she has a 90% success ratio for her free throws here. All right, we want to find the probability that she will make exactly six out of the next 10 free throws. Exactly six out of the next 10. So how many free throws am I talking about total? 10. So if I were looking at this in a combination world, that's my total. All right. We have successes, right? So we have um, that she is going to, and they just did P equals success, all right? And Q equals failure, all right? So what we find is that probability is tied to this binomial theorem, okay? It's tied to this binomial theorem. If I want six successes, that's going to be P to the sixth right? Successes. If I, then how many failures must I have if I have six successes out of 10? How many failures am I going to have? Four. Four, okay. So it's going to be a combination of 10 things taken how many at a time? Which does that one match? It matches my second one, right? My four. All right. What we find is that probability follows the same thing. You take the combination of 10 things taken four at a time, what you don't want, by the way, is where that number is. And you multiply it by the probability of what you want to the power of how many you want times the probability of what you don't want to the power of how many you're not going to get. And that is the probability overall that she gets 6 out of 10. All right? So based on her, what she's done so far, what's the probability she's going to have a success? What is her success rate? It is what? 90%. So this guy is going to be 0.9. So then what's her failure rate? 10% or 0.1. All right. So to calculate her probability here, we're going to say a combination of 10 things taken four at a time times 0.9 to the sixth power and 0.4 or 0.1, sorry, to the fourth power. Yeah, I would definitely put that in my calculator. All right. And you end up with this really long decimal. So make sure you can get this really long decimal correctly. She has about a 1% chance of making exactly 6 out of 10. Now, why would it be 1% of making exactly 6 out of 10? Because chances are she's actually going to do better. We want exactly 6 out of 10. Based on her percentage, she's more likely to get more than that. All right, so they want you to try the probability that she'll get exactly 9 out of 10, exactly 9 out of 10, and then exactly 10 out of 10. So try those two, exactly 9 out of 10 and exactly 10 out of 10. One, 
Your successes should be nine, exactly nine. So it should be a combination of 10 things. Remember your successes um, and your failures add up. So this is going to match the second one. So this is gonna be taken one at a time. Successes would be 90% again to the ninth power, 0.1 to the first power. Okay. And when you do that, you should get 38.7%. All right, and then for 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, combination of 10 things taken zero at a time, 0.9 to the 10th power, 0.1 to the zero power. When you do that, it's a little bit less. You should get 0.349 or 34.9%, and I didn't look at the rounding there if that rounded up. 